Hey everyone, Ben Dinas from Quasar Science. Today we are here to talk about the new software update for your Rainbow 2 and Double Rainbow, the VRGB profile release called 0.7. We have a new series of DMX profiles specifically made for pixel mapping image-based lighting. When pixel mapping, there are a few important factors to consider that are not available in traditional RGB profiles. What is the white point? What is the color space? What other controls can I apply to the light besides just sending RGB? These are called global parameters. Each global parameter channel applies to the entire light, not just per pixel. So what are the global parameters? When RGB are at full in the pixel map world, that is white. Well, what is the value of the white created? With the global parameters, you can set the CCT and plus and minus green of the white point. Now let's talk about color spaces. When you are pixel mapping video, the RGB data you are sending to the lights are already set in a color space. That color space is defined by how the video was transcoded or the live video format is being streamed in. Is it Rec. 709? Is it sRGB? Is it linear? With the new vRGB profiles, you can set how the RGB values should be interpreted into Rec. 709, sRGB, or linear. Well, why is that important? Well, if you're not set to read the color space correctly, that RGB color information will not be accurate to your source footage. These new profiles break down into two flavors, vRGB and RGB variable white. vRGB gives you the ability to set the global parameters of color temperature, plus and minus green, spectrum control, color space, and output. With the RGB variable white profiles, we have reduced the normal footprint of the profile and have RGB CCT plus and minus green per pixel, plus the global parameters of spectrum, color space, and output. Within these two profile types, we have two different color engines that can be selected over DMX. They are absolute hue and relative color metric. Absolute hue is the RGBX color engine where we give the maximum capabilities of our diode sets. It is the way that lighting manufacturers have been mixing color where the CCT does not affect 100% saturation. With the relative color metric engine, this has XY under the hood where we maximize the color spectrum and SSI at any given point made within the color space you selected. When using relative color metric, the CCT applies to the entire range. So what does all of this mean? With these new profiles, you can change from pixel mapping in Rec. 709, for example, to traditional color management on the fly. This gives you more accuracy and correctly balanced light when pixel mapping. Now with 0.7, you have the ability to update your RR and R2's wireless DMX card over USB. This simplifies the need to update each light over Bluetooth individually. When you download the 0.7 update, also download the TMO2 file from our site. Copy them onto the USB-C drive and then plug them into the light and put the light in update mode. After it updates to 0.7, it will reboot and the light will let you know it found a new TMO2 firmware and then update. Then you can be up and running with CRMX2 for the Stardust. All future TMO2 updates will be that simple. Now we have added SACN priorities to the lights. So when there are two controllers on the network sending out SACN, the lights will listen to the packet that has the higher priority. So if your game engine is sending out priority 100 and your lighting console is sending out priority 90, you can then raise the priority of the lighting console to 110 and the light will ignore the lower priority packets. So this means that on the day, on the fly, you can change control of the lights to the controller that you want. This is extremely helpful when working in LED volumes and you wanna be able to pass control back and forth throughout your shoot day. Up next, we added additional dimming steps below 12% intensity in manual mode operation. This allows you to dim between the percentages for when you need more than 10% and 11% is too much. We now have the ability to save the fixture number into the light. So typically you have your universe number and DMX address assigned to the light. You will also have a fixture number. The fixture number is a unique number on set for how the programmer brings up the light from the console. So now when the fixture goes to sleep, it will show the fixture number of the light on the display. When controlling your lights over SACN and ARTNET, when using Unicast, you have to set the IP and subnet mask on each and every light manually. 
So we added IP presets to help you easily pre-fill the IP address. That is it for the 0.7 vRGB profile release. There are other bug fixes and enhancements. Check out the release notes at quasarscience.com support. These are called the global parameters. Meh, meh. I'll get you, Jeremy, if it's the last thing I do.